Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Very good morning indeed to you. Um, if you're not breaking up today, if you're working tomorrow and indeed over the entire weekend, there's a slim chance I might get on your nerves even more than usual between now and one o'clock. I'm feeling a little bit... We break up, we break down, we don't care if school falls down. No more English, no more French, no more sitting on the old school bench. But only a little bit, because there is very important, or there are very important issues to get through. I think we'll wade straight back in. I, I think we got it right yesterday. It was, a, it was an idea of unparalleled genius to foco, focus yesterday's conversation about events in the capital on callers from outside the capital. I wasn't expecting to have quite the international flavour that we enjoyed, but... um. It, it did remind us that this is a global issue rather than simply a traffic issue. So you've got Joanne Webb in the travel centre. It, 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 this is a story that's rather bigger than Joanne's brief. Of course, this is a, a, a tale of planetary crisis, of Armageddon, of an apocalypse of sorts. And I, I really would. I, someone sent me a book, actually, a, a journalist called, called Matthew Todd. Um, is sending this book to everyone he can afford to send it to. I shall pass it on to someone else in, in, the, uh, in the LBC presenter stable. I, I don't know who might benefit most from it. The Uninhabitable Earth, A Story of the Future by David Wallace Wells, which, well, it just paints a picture of, of a, a terrifying prospect and, and explains why what is happening is happening. And, it, look, I, I don't really want to be sharpening cudgels today on the question of, of some of the responses to the protest because it is really annoying. I'm not going to lie to you. You sit in the back of the car. <laughs> I had to lose 80% of the audience. <laughs> in the what of the car? The back of the car. Yeah, the back of the car. Sitting in the back of the car and, and you know, the drinks cabinet can only keep you company for so long as you find yourself stuck in traffic. I've only got 86 channels on the television screen in the back. of no, I jest. You are making your way into work and you're finding the route blocked. Um, and, and of course there's a ripple effect, isn't there? It's like throwing a stone into the middle of a pond and the ripples can reach very far away from the point at which the stone hit the water. I can even, I suppose, if I squint a bit, get my head around how um, some of the criticism or anger surrounding people dancing on the bridge or, or, or police officers having the audacity to, to, to smile or to dance a little jig instead of stoving heads in with their truncheons. I can even see how some of that frustration and anger isn't entirely manufactured. It, it, if you are irritated... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? If you are uh, prevented... No, there's a better word than that. I don't... I'm about to say impacted, but I keep trying not to use impact as a verb. If, if you are... Uh, hit by the protests, affected by the protests, then there is there is a there is a line, isn't there, between support, sympathy, and irritation? I think. I just wonder where that line is for you. First up this morning, um, if that's not too obtuse a question, have you felt sympathy segueing into irritation? Because I have, and then I segue it straight back again. Because I know they're right. I, I know they're right, and I know that this particular mode of protest is achieving an attention of sorts not seen before. And I want to know if you are irritated, because yesterday I think the conversation was confined almost entirely to people who were simpatico with the protesters, the Extinction Rebellion protesters. I ended yesterday's conversations more simpatico with them than I was at the beginning. The question I'm perhaps a little bit self-obsessed um, in asking is, is why is my support not more full-throated? I know that they're right. Um, I've gone further now, I think, oddly. I, I, I don't know whether sometimes my position is inflated by opposition to somebody else's position. So, you know, you open up the sun and you see the utterly predictable depiction of these people as, as forces for bad, as negatives, and, and you find yourself thinking, well, I'll stick up for them. I'm built that way. You know, you get the most powerful people in the British media, most notably, of course, Rupert Murdoch and the Sun editor, Tony Gallagher, and quite often I, I rather lazily wait to see what side they pick and then just pick the opposite because you're almost, almost, almost certainly going to end up on the side of the angels. And that's part, perhaps, of the process that I've been undergoing this week. I don't know about you. Where, where, where do you derive your motivation from or your inspiration from? Eight minutes after ten is the time. 03456060973 is the number. So... 
Police are getting a bit of jip from the usual suspects on Fleet Street. Um, it is annoying when they seal off thoroughfares. It is annoying when they manage to close bridges, not least because in my part of London, one major bridge is already closed because they can't afford to fix it over in Hammersmith. So there, there are now genuine snafus snarling up the entire city. The Environment Secretary has called for an end to the demonstrations and the demonstrators have made it clear that they'll be happy to end the demonstrations if and when the government makes a legally binding commitment to carbon capture statistics. And I, I don't know if you saw the Spurs-Man City game last night. It was immense. I mean, it was absolutely epic. And it reminded me of something. Gary Lineker tweeted shortly afterwards how sorry he felt for people who don't follow football, who don't like football. And I'm a big fan of Lineker's. Uh, I love the way that he um, puts sort of self-interest in the back seat and public interest in the front seat when he could so easily sit on his hands like, like many other public figures. But it focused my mind on this odd question. You know, I'm getting increasingly obsessed with this necessity of side-picking in, in modern politics and indeed modern society. It seems to me to be worse than ever before. Uh, very oddly, given that we've got access to more information than ever before, we've got access theoretically to more perspectives than ever before. But the invitation to pick a side and then just start furiously lobbing stuff at each other it seems so dangerous. And, and the Man City Spurs game, if you're wondering why on earth I've mentioned that, <clears throat> it, it, it's simple. It was a beautiful game of football. Unless you are a slavish supporter of Manchester City, in which case you would be gutted. Or unless you're such a slavish supporter of one of Tottenham Hotspur's historical rivals that you find it impossible to muster pleasure from a Tottenham Hotspur success. That's the result of footballification. The utter lack of objectivity and passion. You can watch a beautiful game unfold, but because of your entrenched, I, uh, the positive word would be loyalties, a negative word would be prejudices or tribalism, because you're so entrenched in your position, you, 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 you are blind to beauty. I'm increasingly thinking that, that we've allowed that to cloud much of our thinking on a whole range of issues. So... That's why today, I just want you to tell me, I don't really mind whether you find them inspirational or irritating, or both. That's it, isn't it? That's the point of footballification. You're not allowed to find them both inspirational and irritating. Oh, no, 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 no. You've got to be City or Spurs. You've got to be Rovers or United. I, I find them inspirational, and then I catch myself finding them irritating, and then I remind myself how inspirational they are. The only circumstances I will accept for not finding them inspirational are these. You've got a better idea. And that's what you're going to ring me with now. This could be one of those slightly manufactured segments of the programme where I'm not actually expecting anybody to ring me because I don't think there is a better idea out there. But if you don't like what they're doing, I think you are kind of required to come up with a better way of drawing attention to this epic issue. Do you know the young lady, the 16-year-old, who inspired the school walkouts, has been nominated for a Nobel Prize, speaking in the European Parliament yesterday. She received the cash prize for some of her activism not long ago and immediately announced the list of charities she was going to give it all to. Uh, Greta Thun Thunberg, T-H-U-N-B-E-R-G is her name, and, and I tell you what, I just slightly patronising thing to say, perhaps, but I bet her mum and dad feel are so proud. Could you imagine having, having at the age of 16, a, such a sense of responsibility that you believe you're capable of healing an entire planet? You believe you can actually make a difference? You know the analogy I always use on stories like this is about the mountain being so high that we pretend it's not there. It's so, so, so impossible to conceive of being able to scale it. It's too huge to fix. So let's just pretend it's not there and carry on. I, I've been guilty of that. I still am guilty of that with regard to climate change. But I, I do wonder, there's a, yet another story in the newspaper today in the um, context of children's mental health and then this unfolding epidemic and there are going to be, if it is ever fully unravelled, hundreds and thousands of reasons why so many young people are feeling a, a sort of existential agony on a scale that, that many of us older generations can't understand. But we're going to have, we're going to have, I, I believe, some form of um, 
uh, environmental source to a lot of the angst, don't you think? I mean, if, if you've actually been taught the proper science, you haven't you haven't received your message through the ludicrous filters of, of Daily Telegraph bloggers and Nigel Lawson. You're actually getting the science from the scientists. And as a young person studying geography or biology or any of the natural sciences, you're, you're going to look at the state of the planet and you're going to feel a genuine sense of despair. What's incredibly uplifting is to see young people like Greta Thunberg and others responding to that sense of despair with determination to fix things. And of course, that extends through the generations with a, an incredibly eclectic mix of people now contributing to the Extinction Rebellion protests. So, I'll say it again, I, I catch myself getting very irritated with them as, as I contemplate the disruption that they are effecting upon my life and my family's life, actually. And then I remind myself, A, that they're inspirational, and B, that if I want to give them a, a towing or a shoeing, I have to come up with a better idea. Have you got one? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. And if you haven't got a better idea, then after I've just uh, abused your ears with my own meandering contemplations, it's only fair that I offer you to do an opportunity to do the same to me. Just, just give me a ring and tell me how you're thinking. And I really want you to be thinking, yeah? Not just putting on a scarf and booing or jeering or cheering. Uh, whose side are you on? Well, I, I think they're inspirational and irritating. Uh, irritating is too mild a word, actually. My life is being disrupted by these people. It is very, very easy to take that little nugget of irritation that you feel, fan it uh, and, and nurture it and nurse it until it becomes a, a raging inferno of fury that you will direct at people who are trying to make the planet a safer place for us and our children and our grandchildren. So, where, where have your thoughts led you during the, the, the course of this protest? Are you feeling your sympathy increase or decrease? And if you, if you don't have any sympathy at all, give me the better idea. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Jane's in Leytonstone. Jane, what would you like to say? Um, well, I've just been saying to um, one of your um, uh, people that I think now is the time for them to take this countrywide rather than it become Lon London-centric. And I think they should start disrupting other cities in the country. Uh, yes, I, I mean, uh, uh, because you want more disruption or because you want some of the pressure to be taken off London or in the spirit of our... Yes, of our... I'm a Londoner. I'd like a little bit of pressure taken off London. <laughs> and I think it... Um, yes, I love um, your thinking. I think if I they think want I... to be taken seriously, everything happens in London. Everything's in London. And I think there must be people um, who are all over the country who can now think, right, let's go and disrupt Glasgow, Newcastle, Birmingham... Um, yes, I, I, I mean, I suppose from their point of view, it's the scale of the disruption uh, on, a, on, an, on, on, on the level of impact rather than on the level of um, geography, isn't yes, it? Yes, but it, it doesn't seem to be too difficult. I mean, they seem to say there's about 30 people on Vauxhall Bridge, so you don't need the numbers that you've got, say, on on. No, I, I'm Bridge. trying to unpick your position, if you don't mind, I, I, because I... I think it's rather perfect. You you, 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 you sympathise, but you also, like me, feel a little soups on of irritation creeping into your analysis of them as being inspirational. And one way to deal with that would be to spread the burden of disruption a little more widely across the islands, Jane. Yes. Well, I think. Uh, might... Can I make another suggestion? Well, hang on a minute. Or What's it about? <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> of course you can, Jane. Go on. Right. Could they, can they form a political party? Oh, Lord, we don't need any more political parties, do we? Well, I don't know, but it seems very easy to... Uh, well, there is a, there is a Green Party, up. madam, you know? Well, yes, but, I mean, yes, they haven't got much impact, though, the Green Party. This would be a very specific, in the same way as Nigel Farage has set up a very specific party with no real policies at all. How he, dare he's you? just saying How this dare is you? a Brexit party. He's got loads of policies, uh, and, and if you don't like them, he's got loads more. Local government level, or... And then vote, late, but then, so you know, I guess I, I, that's part of the problem if, it, if, if these things leach into general elections is that you need to have policies on education, defence, you know, everything, not just on these single issues. It's a great way of boosting up but self... how that is a means of surely... I mean, for all your, the people phoning in, it sounds as if they've got 
a lot of support around the country and, and to actually do it in a way that I know it's within the system that they say they want to bring down, but they don't really mean that they want to bring down the systems or they're idiots if they do. Um, and this would be a hearts and minds of getting it countrywide. And it would start quite slowly, I expect. I don't expect they'd got, get a massive amount, but it would be, and I suppose they would say, well, that's not, not having enough effect. But, um, no, I do, well, I, I hear you. You make some sensible suggestions, and I and I like the logic behind it. With the um, because that's that's a very human reaction, oddly, rather than a a, a sort of a footballified reaction. In that you think, yes, I am inspired, but I am also irritated. Perhaps we could spread both the inspiration and the irritation a little more widely around the country by causing a little bit of chaos in in um, Cleethorpes or Doncaster, or more obviously, I suppose, Birmingham or. Or Edinburgh. Uh, 22 minutes after 10 is the time. 03456060973 is the number. Share your thoughts. There's, there's no particular... Uh, actually, speaking of fences, I was going to say you, you're allowed to sit on the fence today. Um, Jeremy Corbyn couldn't sit on the fence yesterday because four climate change activists had superglued themselves to his front garden fence. <laughs> so I don't know why I found that so funny. I do apologise. Alice is in Putney. Alice, what would you like to say? Oh, hi, James. Um... I'm a big fan, by the way. Oh, it's you're very such a relief to hear your opinion after what you have to listen to before that. But yeah, um, my my thoughts are: I've got a friend who's been um, on in Marblarch for twenty. She she was there at the beginning. I went along. I'm actually a member of, but I I didn't participate because I couldn't. Um, but um, my, I'm a little bit worried about. I, I mean, I'm I'm very. I'm very all behind this movement, but at the same time, I'm I'm worrying that they're not going to. Uh, I'm worrying about what's um, that all this negative stuff that's 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 going to start coming to them, and and that I don't want them to be marginalised. Well, you can see the Murdoch foot yes. soldiers moving into position exactly. with their rifles but raised, can't you? Today, I let me just reach for the such, Sun newspaper yeah. and find out what what what, what they're going for. It's, it's such an easy target, isn't it? And it's well, so that's easy all that to Murdoch's foot soldiers, uh, the only targets they like are the, are the yeah. easy ones. We all care yeah. about the planet, says a newspaper that's routinely published op-eds from climate change deniers. But really? Question mark? Yeah. Glue yeah. do you think you are? <laughs> Yoga prats, yotta shambles, end of the peers show. Yeah, um, all that. And yes. I, I feel that education is, I mean, uh, you know, if somebody's talking like that, then they haven't read The Uninhabitable Earth. No, um, or they well, haven't I mean, most people it. haven't read it. That's that. Most I mean, I only got it this it's morning. It's too hard to get. It's almost apparently it's too hard to get through because it's you get to halfway and you just think I can't read anymore. So I open a bit at random to prove your point. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, page forty-three. How much hotter will it get? The question may sound scientific, inviting expertise, but the answer is almost entirely human, which is to say, political. The menace of climate change is a mercurial one. Uncertainty makes it a shape-shifting threat. When will the planet warm by two degrees, and when by three? How much? sea level rise will there be by 2030 2050 2100 as our children are leaving the earth to their children and grandchildren making the point of course that the science is contingent upon the behavior of human beings and it's the behavior of human beings that the protesters are seeking to influence and yet you're right it, it seems to get up the noses of well the usual suspects is yeah. the only phrase that springs and, and, to mind. and i feel that not only it's education so therefore i mean that, that this is what the campaigners are saying is that they need the truth to be out there and i think the truth is is very very hard but it just has to um it, you know we have to the the media has to and the government has to um say exactly what is happening and actually you know the question is how do you want your children to die it um it's a horrible thing to say. How do you want your children to... How and when do you want your children to die? How and when do you want your grandchildren to die? And if you say, you know, if you think that, you know, you've had a long life and you're going to die in your 80s, well, your children very well may not. They very, very well may not. They might have uh, not that long. And that is the brutal truth. And, um, and I think that... And that's communicating that. That's the, that's the weird thing, because we're humans, aren't we? Not robots. So you don't just punch in an algorithm or punch in a formula and get a predictable response. You can punch the same information into two different humans and get completely different responses. But, but it does... I mean, if, if it is as urgent as, as all attest, if the sun are not being incredibly hypocritical and patronising when they claim that they... Well, we all understand how important it is. What else would you do? What is the option? What would be mm. plan B? I can't think mm. of a plan B, personally, at the moment. No. And I do hope that they... I, I do wish that um, Extinction Rebellion had... 
um, could come up with m m very, some really material targets that they can go to Michael Gove and say, you know, this is what we want and we will stop um, holding up the traffic when you say, yes, we will do this. Yes, uh, we will do that. You and, know. And, and that's part of the problem is that, the, 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 I'm not speaking for you, but speaking exclusively for me, I don't understand the science enough to understand the import or the impact of the demands that they're making. That's something we should probably address. Um, as, as the protests, whether the protests continue or not. Thank you, Alice. 27 minutes after 10. Will makes a very good point. He says, if you closed Kidderminster's Ring Road, it might be reported in the local media, but it wouldn't go international, James. Will makes an excellent point. So this is in response to, um, I think, Jane's suggestion that we need to spread the burden a bit. It's not really fair on London that it becomes the sole uh, bearer of the burden of, of disruption. If you spread it a little further, then two things would be achieved. The message would get spread further, and the irritation that some people feel would perhaps be diluted. I don't know about the second bit, but I'm, I'm comfortable with the first bit. Will's right, though. It would be big news on, on, on uh, it would be big news in the Kidderminster shuttle. If, if protesters managed to close the ring road, I don't know if it would get before the bongs on the 10, as they say. Squeezing Alexander, who's in Hove. Alexander, what would you like to say? Hi, good morning. Um, I'd just like to say that, you know, if you wanted them to do anything different, you would reform the electoral system, which I know I've come on and said quite a few times about many different things. Have you? But, uh, yeah, I have. Um, but, you know, in 2015, 3.8% of the electorate voted for the Green Party, and we got 0.2% of the seats. Yes. You know, these people I, have I tried what everything I'm, else what I'm I mean, to I, actually influence yes. the national conversation, yes. and it's not worked. Yes, so but, how would know, they do that then? Instead, I mean, just today, instead of being on the bridge, how would they be changing the electoral system? Exactly. You know, they, it was, you can't you can't just like go up and just do it. Well, but, so it's not know, an if, answer if, to my if, question if, if, then, no, is it? If, if other people, you know, if, if, if other people, want well, the, to the, put the question to do is today: else. What should they be doing instead of this protest? And and so, first of all, seeking electoral reform is not mutually exclusive from this protest. And second of all, I don't think that, that even if there was you know fifty thousand of them on Waterloo Bridge shouting for electoral reform, I don't think it would make a jot of difference. So so my apologies mm. for brusqueness, but what is your answer to the question I'm actually asking? What could these people well, be doing? instead one, today one point one point i would make is that um no 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 no, no. what could these CO2 people emissions yes what, yes, what, what no, could no, these I'm, people I'm be doing that. today instead yes well 34 percent of our co2 emissions come from transport and for a lot of people currently living in urban i was it in urban cities i was in urban settings and cities i'm gonna hit the news is controlled by their councils yes so one thing that they could be doing Go is going and campaigning in their council elections for environmentalist council but, but again, that's councillors. not mutually exclusive, is it? That's a, but completely compatible with continuing to protest and take direct action like this. Can we put a little note on Alexander? I don't want him ringing in again to use electoral reform as an answer to a question I haven't asked. As he said himself, he's apparently done it several times. It's not very helpful for anyone. This is unsigned. I, I, I don't know if it's, it's my mate Dave. I know lots of people are both firefighters and, uh, and cab drivers, but if this is Dave in Hammersmith, then... Uh, morning, mate. There's nothing other than protest, James. As a firefighter and a London cabbie, this government do not listen unless forced to do so. And the irony of cabbies moaning when we've recently blocked roads ourselves is staggering. Um, something else I, I'm going to read to you, a couple of things that, that I want to bring to your attention. Here, here's one. You set of sickening fools, if you have no homes, no husbands, no children, no relations, why don't you just drown yourselves out of the way? Um, and I've got another one for you here as well. I believe your windows are likely to be broken shortly as an act of retaliation, so I would warn you to take precautions. Um, now, those two last messages have got nothing to do with the Extinction Rebellion protests on Waterloo Bridge or Vauxhall Bridge or elsewhere. They are, in fact, abusive messages that were sent to suffragettes in the early years of the last century. And... I mention it because Rachel sent me a little tweet saying this, Extinction Rebellion remind me of the suffragettes. They're only doing this because they know nothing else will get the issue, the attention it deserves. The only people at fault here are the government for ignoring the problem for far too long. I, I sort of did a little bit of study into anti-suffragette thinking and, and anti-suffragette feeling because I was trying to think of an issue that we would... I'd like to say all agree now, but you've probably got a few headbangers who think votes for women was a step in the wrong direction. But something that we would mostly all agree was a force for good and then portray it as something that was actually really controversial at the time. A, a less powerful example would be the smoking ban. You know, in the run-up to the smoking ban, 
people were suggesting it was going to be the end of civilization as we know it and an appalling curtailment of, of liberty. The idea that you shouldn't be able to give strangers cancer was, a, was an appalling infringement of your liberties, apparently, and then sort of petered out, and now it's normal. And in fact, many of us at my age find the memories almost unbelievable. The idea that we used to go to nightclubs where... You know, 60, 70 percent of the clientele would be smoking. You'd come home and your, your clothes could practically stand up on their own. They were so in, infiltrated with um, tobacco smoke. It's astonishing to reflect on the scale of that change. But the suffragettes, obviously, were, were a much, much, much bigger movement. And they received, I, I mean, acres of abuse. There were cards for sale. Did you know that? Um, death threats were absolutely normal. But there were postcards. There was an exhibition of them last year. And... Postcards, Edwardian postcards were a, were, a, were a craze almost. There were hundreds, hundreds of thousands of them put up for sale and you would use them to mark your opposition to the notion that women should have the vote. Um, and that, I think, is the point that Rachel makes in her comparison. They're just right, these people. It doesn't mean you're not going to be irritated by them. You know, if somebody were to throw themselves under the hooves of a horse at the Derby, we'd probably have a phone in about that. But the suffragettes were right. It's just that at the time, not everybody could see that. I think Extinction Rebellion deserve, at this point in proceeding, to be put in the same category. I think they do. But I'm very interested in hearing reasons why they shouldn't be. Ian is in Brighton. Ian, what would you like to say? Hello there. Um, it's very interesting you just mentioned the suffragettes. Cause that's one of the points that I was going to bring up. I think uh, thus far, um, Extinction Rebellion, what they're doing, I completely agree with. Fantastic thing, trying to trying to bring environment more to the forefront of, of political discussion. I'm, I'm concerned, however, the longer that these things go on, we may see public support turning to animosity. The more that people are disrupted, the more that their livelihoods are affected. The less same same with the suffragettes, which, which is why carrying on becomes even braver in the face of criticism, doesn't it? They didn't stop until votes for women had been secured. They didn't say, oh, well, we, we've got ourselves on LBC, mission accomplished. They cracked on until the principle they were seeking was established. No, exactly. And that's, a, that's, a, that's a fair argument to be made. Um, it's not an argument, I would say, it's history. No, exactly. Um, I would say that the, the point that they have made now has been widely accepted, and I would say in the majority, perhaps yeah. with the exception of people living in London, um, that, that they're absolutely correct. And I think now the, gov the government haven't done what they want, have they? So if they packed up no, and exactly. went home now, it would be a failure. No, um, and, and the, the point I was going to make is now is the time to capitalise on the, the, the favour that they have garnered and, and channel that into just some kind of political forum, whether it be people petitioning to have it spoken about in the, in the House of Commons. That would be going backwards, wouldn't it, Ian? I mean, they would probably argue they've, they've tried all that. You know, they voted for, for environmentally friendly parties. They've got one MP. They, they've seen the political landscape be completely dominated by, by sort of lies and xenophobia. They know that the urgency of climate change dwarfs everything from Brexit downwards and nothing's happened. And then they've done this... And yada bing bada boom, the whole world's talking about them. Why on earth would they stop now? I, I, I think, it's a, as I said earlier, it's, it's a matter of, of crossing the threshold into to where what they've done is going to be, be painted as a, a predominantly negative thing rather than positive. Now, I find it a positive thing personally, um, but I don't live in London. so you I'm not set really of sickening fools, if you have no homes, no husbands, no children, no relations, why don't you just drown yourselves out of the way? Would you have phoned me in 1909? From your, from your Bakelite telephone and said to me, well, I think they've made their point now, but they're obviously, you know, getting on some people's nerves. They're getting death threats. They should probably just sort of do a petition now. No, I, I, exactly. I can see the point that you're making. It's, it's um, not a point. It's, it's a, a question. It's a contentious issue. It's a question. Do you think I'll, you would have phoned me in 1909 to say, well, they're getting death threats now. They should probably pack up and go home. Well done, though. Little pat on the head for the suffragettes. Well, I can't really say because obviously it was a completely on, different political landscape back come then. Come on, and... you're doing exactly the same thing. You're saying they're beginning to irritate people, so maybe they should just do a petition. I'm pointing out the suffragettes irritated people enormously. And I wonder whether you would have phoned me up and said maybe they could just do a petition now and stop actually achieving things. No, that's, that's, that's exactly where you're coming from. I just think that uh, as, as time goes by, if you're trying to hold the... British politics to ransom, I don't know how effective that's going to be. If you well, that's why the, the comparison with the suffragettes is... That's why the comparison with the suffragettes is so powerful, albeit a little bit box fresh, it might fall apart under further scrutiny. Thank you, Ian. Matthew is in Liverpool. Matthew, what do you reckon? Hi, 
say, James, I, I think I'm very much kind of sympathetic with you insofar as that obviously you've argued that you're for them, but not necessarily 100%. I mean, my, my only kind of qualm with all of this is that I can't help but think that we're going to be basically preaching to the converted insofar as the only people going to, who are really going to pay much attention or go and try to inform themselves about this yet further are going to be those who are already sympathetic to the cause. I think this kind of approach, if anything, is going to anger those already opposed to it yet further and make them even more opposed to the environmental movement. I, I, I fail to see how it's going to get them on board. I, I, I can't help but think that like, I'm a member of the Labour Party and I go out canvassing, knocking the doors and things on like, a weekly basis. And I can't help but think that if you, you're trying to convince people to get on board, what you need to do is inform them of the actual facts and figures. Go up and knock on their actual doors and speak to them face to face rather than necessarily disrupt their day. In the, in the hope, I, I, I see the wisdom of what you're saying. Um, in the hope of achieving what? So if you came and knocked on my door, or if one of these protesters came and knocked on my door, and I was either ignorant or sceptical of the science, and then you persuaded me, and you, you know, and, I, and a bit like reading this book I've, I've been sent, and, and you, you put it down and you go, flipping heck, things are much worse than I thought. What do I do then? Well, I, I don't know about. I don't know what we do next. Even if, no, well, I, I mean, me, the all. person that's been persuaded. What does that achieve? Because at the moment, this is a well, form of. The, the, there's the, the, a form. Hang on, let me get this out before it falls apart. There's a form of ransom attached to what they're doing. They're saying, you know, do this thing, or we will continue to disrupt and 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 harry and harm. And I get that. There's a simple transaction there. I, I understand what you're saying about activism and door, door knocking, but what happens after the door knocking? Well, what, what does it actually create? A political will? It's not going to make me vote for one party or another, or I don't see where it leads. Do you see what I mean? So, well, well, even then, if you're just informing them, A, about the problem, but A, about, and then B, about small solutions that can be made. Like, the small, the small things you can do in your own life, which can actually then have Again, an impact. I think I'd I, probably say that's not either or, is it? We can be encouraging people to make small differences in their own life, and we can be closing down Waterloo Bridge until the politicians you, notice. You, you get, you get, but what, what all I'm saying, though, is that I can't help but think that though, as I said before, I, I really do think we're preaching to the converted. Like, if, if I lived in London, I would probably be out on the bridges doing it with them. Uh, but, uh, but at at the same time, I, I really do think that it's you, you're not going to convert anybody. No, I, you might I be you're right. Just, I, I, think I, you're just gonna, I think you're just going to anger people. But again, I, are, I would reach for the suffragettes or even the abolitionist movement, which Sue and Luton reminds us took 20 years for William Wilberforce to, to, to make proper progress in the abolition of slavery. As loads and loads of people were opposed to that. So you're preaching to the converted. I, the suffragettes, presumably, were preaching to the converted until suddenly the country converted. I, I, think, I don't want to be rude, because you, clearly you're not deserving of rudeness, but there's a flavour of cop-out to some of what you're saying, I think. I, 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 don't, I don't think so, because no? I mean, with, with the actual... With the, the labour movement, of which I'm a part, yes. obviously, we, we, we don't go out and actually... Uh, block enormous areas in... No, I'll tell you, let me put it this uh, way, because we're going to run out of time. In kind of <laughs> protest to what the actual government is No, but, but doing. I, you, I know I mean, what, what your I... end game is. You are seeking to persuade this person on their doorstep to vote for your party. What's no, the no, end no, I'm game? Not. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying that at all. Oh. I, I don't want somebody to vote for a party. I'm just talking about actually informing them about the issues at hand and then... No, 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 when you say that you're the, going the, out the, as a Labour activist, you are seeking to yeah. get them to vote for your party and that's why it's not a... As yeah. you just pointed out yourself, it doesn't work as a parallel because you're not going to be knocking on people's doors trying to get them to vote for something. That's what I kept saying, what's the goal? What's the end game? And, and if it comes down to, well, they might make small changes to their own behaviour, well, you can do that and still try and make the political message unignorable by, by bringing London to a comparative standstill. I think you can. And, and you know, it, it, it seems to me that this is working and that you have to look to history for comparable examples. And, and I've got suffragism and the abolition of slavery, which are both fairly big ticket events in history and which were both furiously opposed by whatever the 19th uh, or early 20th century equivalent of, of Rupert Murdoch's son would be. It's 10.45. I mean, it's, it's always slightly depressing to realise how little you know when you start digging into parts of history that you, you, you haven't studied or, or been taught. Alice Hawkins, anyone? Listeners in Leicester, you, you may know who um, Alice Hawkins is.
She was one of the most famous faces of the suffragette movement. Five times she was jailed. <laughs> hunger strike, uh, as she attempted to change the world for millions. The hunger strike, of course, often resulted in these women having pipes forced down their throats by male prison guards and, and food pumped into their stomachs as they often resisted furiously. Uh, amazing. It's only 100 years or so ago, and there's now a statue in Leicester's Market Square Marking Alice Hawkins' contribution, Lillian Lenton, 21 years old. Um, she's one of the people that had a 45-centimetre tube stuffed down her throat as nine male prison staff towered over her. This is 1913. Um, two days into her hunger strike, the tube missed her stomach and the gruel was poured into her airways. She fell ill with pleurisy and pneumonia and as a result of that was released from Holloway Prison. <laughs> yeah, flipping middle-class do-gooders, aren't they? I bet you. And you think about what would have been the early 20th century equivalent of a sum columnist. And you know as well as I do, as sure as the nose on your face, that they'd be having a crack at women like this. Uh, Emily Wilding Davison, possibly the most famous of them all, after she threw herself under the king's horse at uh, the 1913 Epsom Derby. <laughs> Pathetic, honestly. You see what I mean? I, I mean, at what point do we recognise the lessons of our past? as having a relevance to our present. And there is no dispute now about the science of, of climate change, about the imminence of planetary disaster. It, well, of course there's dispute, but it's between idiots and David Attenborough, just as a sort of emblem or a, or a umbrella under which the rest of the informed population gathers. And, and yet it would be very easy for me to turn you against them. I could whip it up. Super easy. A few exaggerations, a few embellishments, you know. Ambulances can't get over bridges. People will, people are losing their jobs because, um, um, why are people losing their jobs? Anyone? Bueller? No. I, but they might do, yeah. And, and, and yet, in the car this morning, I still felt the little creep of irritation. Uh, Jimmy's in New Malden. Jimmy, what would you like to say? Oh, hi, James. How you doing? You all right? All good, mate. What's on your mind? Good, good. Yeah, well, basically, I'm, I'm actually involved with the hemp industry, and um, I haven't heard anybody talking about how hemp can provide a massive and fast solution to the global warming crisis, in that you can actually produce um, hemp biofuel, and it's a completely renewable source. I, I, I was... hear you, my friend, but it's not something that the people on Waterloo Bridge could do today instead of protesting, and a lot of them probably will, will, will be doing it anyway. So it's more, today's question is more directed at, at, at people being a bit cynical or sceptical about the protesters and asking what, what would you rather they did? What could they do instead that would draw attention to the urgency of this crisis? Because I, I have some friends in, in, in the hemp industry and they do brilliant, brilliant work, but what they need is amplification and attention and what this protests do is bring amplification and attention to, to the need for change. Mm. Unfortunately, um, I think it is actually necessary to create the kind of disruption that they're creating to actually get people to talk about it, to get this information out to people. And, um, uh, you know, as much as it's an inconvenience, um, at, at the end of the day, we're talking about the life and, and the death of the planet, ultimately, which is far more important than people getting into work. Yes, there is the stake of people's health and, you know, people struggling to get to hospital, might, might, maybe because the bridge is out of use, etc., and emergency vehicles. That That is unfortunately a cause and a that has to take place just like you know obviously there's cause and effect with all these um you know horrific things that are happening with with climate change around the world which we're seeing and in, in 2018 in october it was broadcasted on the news nationally what the actual uh, you know, importance was that we actually reduce carbon emissions by 45% in the next 10 years, uh, according to what scientists say. So uh, the fact yeah. that we only have 10 or 12 years to do that, and it's not actually really sort of happening quickly enough, is why this, this kind of interruption needs to happen. Uh, just to basically get it, get it actually action. Really, I hear you, I, and, and of course, as my friends at THTC Clothing would would attest, uh, the, the 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 story of hemp is a fascinating one. It speaks to an awful lot of the tides that have washed up on the shores of history in in recent years. You look at the the, the history of why it was so demonised and why it was squeezed out of the commercial marketplace in the early twentieth century in America. It's it's a it's a fascinating journey but it is something that people will embrace only after the necessity of embracing change has been established which is what the protests i think are de designed defined even to do it's 10 54 it's thursday i completely forgot it's mystery hour 
um, at 12 o'clock today. In the next hour, I don't know at the moment, I'm, to I'm toying with the idea, I'm going to take a few more calls on this subject. I really do love the tale about culinary cultural appropriation. Um, not least because I spent so much of my time putting the shoe into lazy tabloid reactions to stories that actually I, 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 I feel almost refreshed and relieved when I find myself on the same side as the lazy tabloid reactions. I am at my least woke when it comes to suggestions like the one we saw yesterday from the restaurateur Aldo Zilli that only Italians can cook proper Italian food in Italian restaurants. I think that's really daft. Gordon Ramsay's taking a bit of a kicking at the moment for a new sort of pan-Asian restaurant that he has because it's not, as far as I gather, it's not culinarily specific enough. It's, it's a bit of a hodgepodge, you know. There'll be some, some Vietnamese food and some Japanese food and some Chinese-inspired food on the menu, and that's upset people. And when people are upset, I, I, I was raised to pay attention, but I wasn't raised necessarily to always agree with them. I think we're going to get stuck into that in the second hour. So if you know more about it than I do, which, to be honest, would not be hard, then... um. Get your knife and fork ready. Or indeed your chopsticks. Peter's in East Barnet. Peter, what would you like to say? Hello, good morning. Um, I have a two-pronged uh, side to m my chat this morning. And that is that, first of all, anybody who wants to get involved with lawlessness and anarchistic behaviour needs to be wiped off the streets. Like the suffragettes. That's, that's, I'm, I'm not getting into suffragettes. I'm talking oh, about... You said anyone involved in lawlessness. The, 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 and, and I'm also talking about the, the, the plight of the planet. There's no, I know, but I just when you say anyone involved in lawlessness, that, that would include anti-apartheid campaigners, suffragettes, okay, uh, I, abolitionists. I, I have I have come on to the poll tax riots to to talk about um, the plight of the planet and what these people are doing on these bridges. Yes. So we didn't. We, so it was a misspeak when you said all people who are who are doing lawlessness. Hands up! It was a misspeak. So you just mean these people because their cause is less important than the other ones we've mentioned. Uh, no, I'm not um, talking about whose cause is more important uh, than anybody else. So why else. should these ones be taken off the streets, but all the other causes I've just suggested that employed lawlessness to achieve their ends not be taken off the streets? Well, I thought this was the headlines of the day. Um, no, and, go, on the contrary. We spent half an hour comparing it with suffragism, abolitionism, and even the smoking ban, Peter. But w w one question was asked is what can we do about the situation of why these people are standing there as they are for the reasons they're standing there but, but like they are. What else could they be doing is the question, I think. Well, if somewhere in their leadership they could find somebody who doesn't want to get involved in lawlessness behaviour and doesn't want to get involved in anarchistic behaviour and wants to get involved correctly in politics... Yes, I see, you've done it again. I do apologise, but you, 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 we, we kind of reached a gentleman's agreement that we'd let you make your point, and I wouldn't keep referring your point back to historical examples, but you've done it again. All, all of the words you've just used apply equally to everything from the poll tax riots to the suffragettes. Well, we, we have a major crisis on our hands we as do. regards the world's environment, and the only way it's going to be solved is by governments, and it's going to be sold by big money. And the, only, and the only way that can be done is in a lawful way. We are running out of time. We have problems where we can't get the bees to pollinate, we can't breathe in our cities. But, but I, I would argue, if I were a, a spokesperson for Extinction Rebellion, we've tried all that, mate. We've tried all the lawful stuff. It's time to start, it's time to start cracking eggs. We, we need leadership, not just in this country. We need leadership in every single country in the world to deal well, with... Actually, you say leadership in the same breath that you said these people should be wiped off the streets. That doesn't sound like leadership to me, mate. That sounds like something rather uglier. Pushing people like the police are trying to do to get them off the streets because they're... I don't think the police are trying to get them off the streets, actually. I think the, 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 the right to peace or peaceful protest is, is sacrosanct. It can be peaceful and hugely disruptive. When it becomes non-peaceful, some of your points work. But wiping people off the streets for trying to save the planet? That's quite an odd place you well, ended you're, up in. You're, you're lucky you could get to work and you haven't had your job taken away. Well, who has? You have to listen to your listeners this morning. I, I have. Who has lost their job? Well, well, there we are. I don't know them personally. Well, but, just uh, name one. Enough. I've had enough stories this morning. Well, go on, tell me one. Lost their jobs. Who has? I listened to Nick Ferrari. Well, who's lost their job as a result of these protests? People who were involved in having to make deliveries. Into, into They've been the, fired uh, in the last two days. If people haven't got money to pay, what can they do? Well, I'm just reading here from someone who's currently going about their deliveries at this very moment, saying it's actually it's a bit taken a bit longer than usual. Let me find it for you. 
but it's um it's got to be done. Oh, and who's, who's, I need I need a number. Who's lost their job as a result of these protests? Maybe the police have, have found, have found a, a few avenues for people to get down now. Maybe they're doing yeah, but their I'm, job. I'm, I'm coming back to you again. I, I I think we're on the same side. We both think something should be done. But who's lost their job as a result of this? From what I've heard this morning, I don't know them personally, but people have, have rung up because they okay. can't get into work. Well, that, that, that might mean they're not working today. It doesn't mean they've lost their job. If people are on the, the sort of contracts that they're on and, and people can't afford to keep them on... So there's um, another bonus about this. It might actually draw attention to the disgrace of, of short-term contracts, zero-hours contracts and, and the gig economy. But unfortunately, most of the people in my profession who will be giving a kicking to the protesters are also very cynical and sceptical when we point out the iniquities of the, of the zero-hour contracts and the gig economy. But I'll take that, Peter. I'll take that to the bank. If this is impacting upon people whose terms and conditions are already appalling... That's awful. But hopefully we'll use it as an opportunity to, to agitate to improve their terms and conditions, not to wipe the protesters off the streets.